and etc. Discipline was well <laughs> an issue today. Well, for, for me, it was all the stoppages in the game. There wasn't too much in the line of bad strikes and stuff like this. This is Owen Bradley's second yellow card. The first one was off the camera, so we don't have it. It's this is the harsh, second one. No, definitely harsh. I think there's a yellow card, but if that was, as we were talking about later on, in the all Ireland semi-final or final, it wouldn't have been a yellow card. But the ref so was right. The ref was right, definitely. Here we see a good shoulder, blows him straight out over the sideline, and straight away, number five comes in here, and I, that's uh, Gerard O'Kane. That's the guy I think should have got the yellow card, Gerard uh, O'Kane. O'Kane, for coming in and, and getting involved. It would have been a sideline, and they would have got on with the game, and there'd have been no missing. Uh, good work by the sideline and the referee here, trying to make peace, and get on with the game but I think this is the guy the third guy coming in is the guy, the guy that actually got the yellow card I thought it was a good shoulder and uh, it's a shame that there's so much stoppages it is taking the physicality out of the game and it shouldn't because it is championship football is about tough hard fair mm-hmm. football Alright given um, all you said we asked you to nominate three men for a man of the match who, who did you go for? Yeah well there was three people we went for uh, Andy Mallon number one fantastic game at corner back marking Owen Bradley and didn't really give him a hop of a ball had a fantastic game. Uh, we went for one of the, the Derry players, Mark Lynch, I thought he was really good in the first half, driving through, made the goal, drove through the heart of the defence and was really very good in the first half. And of course, Stephen MacDonald at number 14, we saw the long ball in there, setting up the goal. He got nearly all the scores. Fantastic player, doing really well again this year. Right, and Kieran, who did you... Des, we went for a defender, we went for Andy Mallon. He, uh, he, he tracked on Bradley all day, he kept him to one point from play. Uh, and, and sometimes cornerback play, they, they don't get the credit, they don't get the man of the match awards and uh, it's the toughest position to play on the field and, 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 and he done a superb job tracking on badly as I said all day and yeah. was a well deserved winner man of the match. The role of the cornerback has changed though hasn't it I mean with the movement of players etc. It is but it's still a difficult position yeah. you know all the top players the Michael Means, the Gooch Coopers these guys are all in corner forwards and yeah. you know you look at cornerbacks faces before big <laughs> matches and they, they trust to be white with, with fear you know so yeah. it's a tough position to play. Okay then well let's hear from the man of the match then Andy Mallon chatting with Joanne Cantwell. It's just a typical uh, Ulster Championship match, you know, hard hitting. You come up the dairy, you, you get on handy, you know, we, we had to fight for our lives to get out here the day, you know, so thank God the base pulled it out of the bag, you know. The overall view, though, from the Armagh camp seems to be, while happy with the win, not too happy with the performance. No, no, it's, it's nowhere near, I'd say we're about 60% there at the minute performance, what, what we were looking, you know. But, uh, you know, we come to the dairy, it's, it's not going to be easy, like Ulster Championship is always hard, but it's all about the win, you know. Well done, Andy, and a boost for our cornerbacks everywhere. Now, it's competition time. To mark the start of this year's Football Championship, RT Sport and Ulster Bank, official sponsor of the GA Football All-Ireland Championship, have come together to offer you the chance to win a VIP weekend in Dublin and attend this year's Football All-Ireland Final in Croke Park on September the 19th. You could even be cheering on your own county, hopefully, but the prize for two includes premium-level match tickets, in Croke Park, a two-night stay in a Dublin city centre hotel, courtesy of Ulster Bank, and €2,000 spending money. To enter, all you have to do is correctly answer the following question. Who are the current GA All-Ireland Senior Football Champions? Is it Dublin, Kerry or Mayo? To enter, call 1515 71 71 74 with your selection or text FOOTBALL followed by your answer and contact details to 57111. The number to call from Northern Ireland is 0901 293 0550. For more details and terms and conditions, go to RTE Airtel, page 193. The lines are open until 6pm on Sunday, May 30th. You must be 18 years or over to enter and will announce the winner on that evening's Sunday game. Well, there's lots more to come in the programme. Don't look Grady and Gerlach Nan look ahead to the Hurling Championship. Kerry begin the defence of their football crown, but next up... The clash of Leinster neighbours, Wicklow and Carlo. And you're very welcome back to the Sunday game. A look ahead to the year in football and hurling coming up later. But first, let's head to Port Leisha for an intriguing clash in Leinster between Carlo and Wicklow. Watching this one, Marty Morrissey. For day one of the Leinster Championship, Carlo are surprisingly confident. There are five newcomers to Championship football. Three in defence, Torig Murphy, Benny Kavna, Paul McElligot and one at centre forward, Dara Foley. But by far and away, the most interesting of the new arrivals is at midfield, 
where Brendan Murphy and Tomás Walsh are joined for the very first time. The story of this match and many more, I feel, will revolve around these two fine footballers. The great Mick O'Dwyer starts his seventh decade of championship football and his fourth season with Wicklow by picking 12 of last year's championship team. Dara Haney returns to guard the edge of the square with Kilmerkel Crooks Brian McGrath at six. A late change sees Don Jackman named as James Stafford's midfield partner and their performance today will undoubtedly have a bearing. Up front, all the big names are there. Dean Aldham, Sean Furlock, Tony Hannon and team captain Leighton Glenn. Long ball into space, Carlo, first to the ball, first challenge is a good one. Torek McWalter coming from right half back, slipping one through, in towards Shawnee Furlong, he's always dangerous, comes championship time, comes back out first, Paul Earls, here's Dean Odlum, struggling with the form and indeed injuries over the winter and early spring, but he is a man to watch out for. He has uh, overruled his earlier indication and he's going to give a throw ball. Slipping through there is Leighton Glenn. Tony Hannon, first score of the Leinster Championship. The name is Tony Hannon. Comes on for his Dean Odlum. Into the space, got inside is Nicky Myrna, the pass is not a great one, good defending by Carla, comes to Tony Hannon and that's over the bar. He's looking sharp, isn't he? Wicklow the dominant side on the scoreboard. Great catch by Tomas Walsh. Brendan Murphy slips one through for as Johnny Kavna. Good combination, football again from Carlo is the finish. Equally as classy, fine point. Oh, wonderful play by Brendan Murphy. Thomas Walsh has gone inside. Murphy is uh, steadying the ship here, floating this one in, and that is a wonderful score. Brendan Murphy. Punched down by Thomas Walsh. Here comes Sean Gannon, stumbled. The referee having a word again with, this time, Nicky Myrna. He could well be showing a yellow card here. He is, for that deliberate trip. This is uh, the incident again. Slightly better, easier angle for Simon Ray and Carlo. We're back in business. Level in Port Leisha. Leighton Glenn, international rules footballer. This lad can play anywhere. Dropping this in to Sean Furlong. Trying to get there ahead of Liam Murphy. Here's Furlong! And that's gone over the bar. He really is a wonderful footballer. And quite dangerous near goal. Watch this. Furlong getting the better of Liam Murphy. He had a rasper, came off the crossbar. Nice little flick there from Dean Odlum. Hannon again orchestrating affairs from centre forward. Porig McWalter. Good build up by Wicklow as they bear down in goal. Carlo under pressure. And the ball is in the net. Paul Earls. Carlo defensively very weak here. Here's Paul Earls. Three Carlo defenders around him. He was under pressure. He just toe poked it and he sneaked it in the post by the post and beat James Clark. Thomas Walsh waiting for it, gathering it. Trying to get through the cover. Two Wicklow players around him. One of them is Leighton Glenn. Thomas Walsh is brought to, to the ground and that's a free in for Carlo. Meanwhile.